After viewing this program, the learner will understand some of the basic properties and functions for the neural control of jaw and facial muscles. Selected laboratory techniques will be used to demonstrate the role of the muscles and neural reflexes in the control of coordinated jaw and facial movements. Almost all of the mandibular or facial movements which occur during physical activity, such as chewing or talking, involve contributions of several muscles. These activities involve contributions from three types of skeletal muscle contractions. A concentric contraction occurs when a muscle shortens and develops tension. The mandibular elevator muscles contract and shorten during mandibular closure. An isometric contraction occurs when muscles contract and tension is developed, but the muscles do not shorten. The mandibular elevator muscles contract isometrically during maximum intercuspation, and the digastric muscles contract isometrically at maximum opening. An eccentric contraction occurs when a muscle contracts and is lengthened by an opposing muscle, or by an external force greater than the tension developed internally in the contracting muscle. An example of this type of contraction occurs when the teeth are in occlusion and the jaw is moved laterally. The masticatory elevator muscles contract eccentrically on the working side. The first objective is to demonstrate electromyography. Electromyography, EMG, is a useful technique to quantify information from membrane potentials during motor unit recruitment of masticatory muscles. A recorded electromyogram provides information about the onset, duration, and termination of muscle activity. If two synergistic or antagonistic muscles are recorded at the same time, the relative timing for motor activity for the two muscles can be determined. Bipolar electrodes are placed over specific facial or mandibular muscles. These electrodes are placed parallel to the fibers of the superficial masseter and the digastric muscles to examine masseter and digastric muscle activity. With the subject's mandible in a relaxed position, there is almost no discernible electrical activity on the oscilloscope because few motor units are recruited. As the mandible and the teeth are brought into occlusion, motor units are recruited and EMG activity increases. Then, as the subject's jaw is slowly opened, EMG activity diminishes. In this procedure, Motor reflexes in the masseter and digastric muscles will be demonstrated using the technique of electromyography. The first reflex is the jaw jerk or jaw closure reflex. The subject is instructed to swallow and relax until the mandible is in the clinical rest position. A reflex hammer is used to indirectly strike the chin, trigger the sweep beam on the oscilloscope, and drive the mandible slightly downward. Muscle spindles in the masseter muscles are lengthened and stretched. Neurons of these sensory receptors will synapse with and recruit motor neurons in the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. A synchronous recruitment of several motor units is demonstrated by the amplitude of the biphasic wave seen after the stimulus. The subject is instructed to unilaterally place a cotton roll between the posterior teeth opposite the recording electrodes and bite firmly. 
the oscilloscope is triggered and synchronous electrical activity is seen in the masseter muscle. Minimal electrical activity is noted in the digastric muscle. Motor units are recruited as seen by the synchronous wave, followed by a silent period of motor neuron and motor unit inhibition for 18 milliseconds. The time base is a 10 millisecond division. After the silent period, asynchronous activity is recorded. The anterior digastric muscles have very few muscle spindles. This can be demonstrated by instructing the subject to place his jaw in the open position and tapping the chin upward to drive the mandible toward closure. No synchronous electrical activity is observed in the lengthened digastric muscles. The objective of the next procedure is to demonstrate a concept in exercise physiology called the muscles are spared when the ligaments suffice. In this procedure, the subject will be instructed to place an acrylic anterior splint over the lower central incisors. The mandible will be placed in the clinical rest position and little electrical activity is recorded. The subject will bring the teeth into maximum intercuspation and an increase in EMG activity is recorded. A 500 gram weight is added and the subject is instructed to lower the jaw then elevate the jaw. Note the recruitment of masseter muscle fibers to perform work. The jaw will be returned to the clinical rest position and the weight held in this position. There is an increase in motor unit recruitment in the clinical rest position. Therefore, the subject will relax the masticatory muscles and allow the mandible to open to a position where minimal electrical activity occurs. The subject has subconsciously reduced motor unit activity to the masseter and stabilizes the loaded jaw by using the non-contractile fascia, tendons, and ligaments to support the jaw in this position. This action reduces the energy required for the masseter muscles to support this weight. This physiologic technique is the principle used when carrying a heavy load with the arm placed laterally to the rib cage and pelvis. In this procedure, the motor point for percutaneous stimulation of the masseter muscle is located and marked. This is a point below the zygomatic bone and in the periauricular region where the masseteric nerve enters the masseter muscle. An isometric transducer is attached to an acrylic splint to measure muscle tension. A single submaximal square wave electrical stimulus approximately equal to 0.5 milliseconds duration and 20 volts is applied to produce a twitch contraction of the masseter muscle. Electrical activity in the muscle will precede the mechanical contractile event as seen in the lower trace. The muscle contraction curve shown on screen has a latent period of a few milliseconds, a time to peak tension of 45 milliseconds, and a half relaxation time of 25 milliseconds. The peak twitch tension is equal to 150 grams of tension. The muscle contraction curve in this subject is 100 milliseconds, which indicates a muscle with mixed fiber types. Masticatory muscles in humans are composed of three muscle fiber types. The slow twitch oxidative fibers have a contraction period of 100 milliseconds and are fatigue resistant. The intermediate oxidative fibers have a contraction period of 50 milliseconds and are fatigue resistant. The fast twitch fibers have a rapid contraction period but are fatigue susceptible. The blink reflex is a facial reflex. It results from the sensory stimulation of the cornea. Sensory input is relayed by the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve to the spinal tract nucleus. 
the interneurons connect to alpha motor neurons located in the facial nucleus. This motor nerve recruits motor units in the orbicularis oculi, and the eye blinks. This reflex is used clinically when testing for the different depths of anesthesia. It is also used as a diagnostic test for certain neurologic disorders, such as facial paralysis. An acute block of this reflex may occur by an inadvertent injection of local anesthetic into the body of the parotid gland. The technique used for a demonstration of the blink reflex will require stimulating the supraorbital nerve with a threshold single stimulus. The stimulus duration is 0.5 milliseconds and the voltage is 11 volts. Small recording electrodes are placed beneath the eye over the surface of the orbicularis oculi muscle. The stimulus elicits a contractile response, which can be viewed on the electromyograph oscilloscope screen. The latent period ranges from 11 to 15 milliseconds, and is much longer than the latent period of 2 to 3 milliseconds associated with direct stimulation of the mesoteric nerve. In review, the muscles of the jaw, lips, face, and tongue must be carefully controlled and coordinated. Masticatory muscle movement can be voluntarily controlled and modified by input from the cerebral cortex and middle brain. However, both simple and complex reflexes in the oral facial region can also initiate and control movement. The integration for the control of these muscles is important for mastication, facial expression, swallowing, talking, and related respiratory movements.